Hi, this is Becky Gromlick with the Watercolor Classroom. Today we're going to paint this flower and I'm going to teach you three ways to use Frisket. One for bigger areas is an old brush and it's uh, dead as a brush now, but it still works for Frisket. The other is these little gum picks that you can get and they work for intermediate size areas. Not big, but not tiny. And then this is a new discovery to me and I've tried it and I love it. You can get super fine lines using a pen tip. And this flower has places to use all of them. I use PBO drawing gum. And I, you know, it leaves these stringy things and you can just pick them off and throw them away. And so I'm gonna go on and fill it in. And I'm not going quite all the way to the edge because I want to use the fine line one for that. Now before it gets any drier, I'm gonna switch to this gum pick and just gonna go out like this. If you wait till it gets too dry, then you get a problem with um, the first part that you've put on lifting off. Finer at the bottom. And it's a little bit less at the bottom. These you can clean off. The brush, once it's into a brush, you can't. But these you can clean off and then use it again a few times and then after a while all the little things come off and it's dead. Now up here we have some parts that are not real big. Maybe the brush would work for them, but this works too. And now while that's still wet, I'm gonna do this. This stuff's amazing and it actually goes pretty, pretty far before you have to redip your pen. I did some hair the other day and I could wind down all the way around her face before it ran out of ink. And then this side of this one is also very fine. But I'm pressing a little bit harder because it's not quite as fine as that. And it gets wider when you press harder. I'm also lifting as I come out. I waited pretty long and it was kind of dry. Okay. And then my paper. So that spot's dry now, so I can just roll it off. And there's a couple other spots that were uninvited to the party. We are going to be using for this flower dioxazine purple, ultramarine blue, quinacridone magenta, and thalo blue. I'm gonna start up here where it's light and I've watered some of my dioxazine purple way, way down. And I'm gonna get it wet in here and then put the tiniest bit of pink in and let them go together. And that's even darker than maybe it should be. And then up here, I'm gonna let some of the purple and the blue blend together, keeping my colors light up here for this part. The next part has quite a bit of pink and I'm gonna lay it in first. This brush holds a lot of water and then it goes to more blue as it goes up. So this is, I'm gonna use the 
ultramarine blue, too dark, watered down a puddle. This is very pastel here. Getting right to that edge. A little pink in there. And I'm going right over the frisket. This one has some yellows in it, so I'm going to put them in. Getting that purple all the way up there. darker purple. And there's some blues in there too, which add to the charm. The blue more of a blue-purple. It's not really a blue-blue. Up in this part. It's quite dark. It's, that's a little too blue. I want it to be a purple-blue. Some magenta. I have mixed Hooker's Green, Phthalo Blue, and Indigo. If you bought a Teacher's Choice palette, there's no indigo in it, but you can make indigo by mixing black with ultramarine blue, and it's very similar and it'll work. I'm putting it on dark down here. I almost got it into my green there, so you, you know I need to slow down enough. So. So this isn't nearly as dark as the background. And I think I'm going to add some more indigo to it because I want it very dark at the bottom. I'm not as concerned about being it being a matte color as it is in the photo. I'm going to keep going up this side because uh, I don't want to have drawing lines. Being careful around the flower. Now I want to get lighter as I go up. 
and I also don't want a hard edge. So I'm gonna rinse my brush, dry it off really well, and just soften this edge so that when I come back to it, rinsing, drying again, maybe I'm rinsing, maybe I'm drying a little bit too much. There, that's better. And get this edge soft so that I don't have a sharp edge as I go up. And I'm gonna get in with my smaller brush while my color's really dark here. Trying to be careful not to dip my hand into that and end up ruining my flower. And before I totally lose this color, I'm going to get this side. And I'll just have to sharpen, soften those edges too. But about here is where I'm getting lighter, and it's okay if it's a little bit higher up on this side, but it's time. And so I can just soften the edge here. Now back to the small brush and all this detail stuff. But I'm gonna let it get lighter. Now I've gone up pretty far here and it's time to evaluate. Do I really want it to go lighter? Is it forming enough contrast? And I think that the answer is that yes it is because um, it is going to be a lot of white against this because that top part of the painting has a lot of white in it. All this frisket. Oh, there, I just, I, that did leave a bit of a sharp line. Thought it was light enough that it wouldn't. But I, I think I'm gonna go for it. Oops, I see a little spot that I missed. It's blending together pretty thoroughly because it's the paper's quite wet. And I think I'm going to take this color down a little bit so that the dark is not a straight line across there. And I'm going to bring it up here a little bit further as well, adding some more indigo. I'm squinting at it to see what I think because I don't want to go back in after I'm all done and have to fix. Because then usually what that means is you have to go over the whole entire background. That doesn't sound too fun to me. Right, I think that I'm going to call this Done. Before you take the frisket off, you want it to be totally and completely dry so it doesn't tear your paper. There's a couple of different ways of taking off frisket. You can just use your finger, and uh, for smaller areas, that works really great. If it gets to be a big area, it, it gets a little difficult. You can use one of these. It's called an eraser, but it doesn't work very well for erasing pencil. So even those fine lines that I did with that fine pen, they come out quite loud. So you have to work on them after. You always have to work on frisket. Well, I shouldn't say always, but almost always. And the last way to take off frisket is by using tape. You just drag it across and 
the tape. Yeah, that's a lot that the eraser doesn't lift. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but there's just little pieces left, little smudges left, and the paint won't hit here if there's any left. So if you want to do any adjusting. All right, we definitely have a backlit flower. This is manganese blue hue. And this part is all blue. And there's bits of blue all along this edge as well. And there's other colors in there. If you look closely, there's little plots of orange and yellow, and I am not going to do that. If this blue looks too bright, I'll gray it down. And it does get purpler as it goes up, so I'm gonna get a little bit of purple on my palette again. Water it down a lot because it's pretty intense, and as it goes up here, it gets purpler. I'm just doing some blue at the top of all these. And then here and there some purple. And here it's all mixed up. It's not as clear and purple. And just the tips of it are colored on this one. This one too. This one over here is, is grayed. Now down on the bottom, I guess because they're reflecting off of the green, I'm going to add a little purple to the green so it's slightly grayed. The fuzzy part looks green. Now it picked up quite a bit of the background there, so those fuzzies got a lot darker, but I think uh, that it's okay. I'm actually going to go with a slightly yellow or green because it mixes in with that edge. Now the fuzz on the outside is darker than it is towards the, the petal for these. Yellow it up a little bit. Then we get into a gray. So I'm gonna mix some purple and green and make a gray with a blue tinge to it. So I'm mixing my three colors that I have on here. It gets lighter as it goes. Blending right into that green. And the middle of this uh, petal is quite a bit darker. I'm getting some hookers, mixing a little bit of viridian with it because it, so it's not. So this darker area will make the whole thing look rounder, give it more of a 3D look. And then I'm gonna try and get rid of that sharp edge right there. This side was much wider. I'm just going to keep it very pale. Doing some purple. I'll turn to some of the phthalo blue. Just going to wash over this as light as I can. Lighter than that, even.
If you like this painting, would you please hit the subscribe button and the bell if you want to be notified of more videos and leave me a, a message in the comments. I'd love to hear from you and how it's going with your painting, any questions that you might have. Thank you so much for watching.